Hi, everyone. John Doring here, and this is the X. Hey, it's NMRAX again. This is the place where model railroaders and railroad modelers and all of us who are crazy about trains come together to share ideas and inspirations and insights. So remember and tell your friends, you heard it here on the X. So let's get started here. Our first clinician of the day is a young man who loves his trains, um, and especially the small things that make the sounds inside of them. He's here to help us all learn a little bit more about selecting speakers. Everyone, please welcome Andrew Warrington. Drew, go ahead. Hey, how are you? Excellent, excellent. Good. Uh, I'm not the most expert, expertised person about this. I'm not seasoned in anything, but I did my research and I presented what I found. I think I chose a good speaker for general purposes. And if you know everything I said along the way, I hope it at least entertained you a little bit. <laughs> Super. We're looking forward to it. All right. Well, I guess we can roll the video. There's not much else I need to say. All right. Hi, I'm Drew Warrington. You probably already heard that in the introduction, but I'm recording this a couple days in advance, so I have no idea what was already said. If you're anything like me, you're fine continuously making poor financial decisions. But when it comes to spending $15 on speakers to see which one you like, that's really out of the question. So what I'm going to try to do, all on a $0 budget, is experiment with the speakers that I already have in factory-ready models. Now the ready to run industry is pretty helpful with this. Between manufacturers and even within manufacturer products, there's a huge variances of speakers that they use, as I'm sure you already know. So unless your fleet only consists of Rapido RDCs or Broadway Limited Big Boys, you're pretty much set to go. Now at first I was skeptical, I didn't know how much variety there would be and if it would even be worthwhile. But to my surprise, I found a decent variety of different speakers that performed very different from each other. Now the goal here is to try to find the best speaker for HO scale, and that's a really vague topic. So we're going to try to base that on three criteria. Now in this clinic, I'm going to focus on the quantitative one, which is sound volume without maxing out. But the two others that are really important to consider are sound quality and range of pitch. Now Kaylee Zhang's done some great clinics on pitch, but here's a quick rundown of it. Different speakers convey different pitches in a variety of different ways, and no matter who the manufacturer is, it's pretty easy to predict this beforehand. Now, obviously, sugar cube speakers are going to have a higher range of pitch, and they'll convey some bass, but it won't be as great as the other stuff that's out there. The second ones to consider are those circular pancake speakers. I probably have the wrong term, but that's at least what I call them, and we're counting in these, too. They obviously rest somewhere in the middle between small speaker and big ultra bass boosted MP3 speaker, but they do convey a, convey a wide range of pitch as you can see right here. Now the last speakers that we're going to consider are MP3 speakers, and again I reference Kaylee Zhang, as to me this is a bit of a continuation of her clinic, although of much lesser quality and expertise. Now, anybody who's familiar with my YouTube channel, Drew at Nordal MRRC, I have a bit of an obsession with Rapido, and I'm going to focus a bit on their products tonight, too, because in every single model they make, they use an MP3 speaker. And yes, that's exactly what they use in phones. And when I did decibel test, I obviously included my phone, too. Because consider this. You listen to music all the time off of your phone, but you wouldn't consider doing it off your model train. And instead, we often complain about the limitations of the speakers in our models. So that doesn't really have to be. And my point here isn't that we should run our trains around playing music, but it is that we could get much higher quality out of our models if we use those higher quality speakers. But I mean, I think Rapido has some other opinions about that whole music thing. And one final thing to consider before we move over to the light box and the test track is the speaker baffle size. Because the same speaker in one setting can sound completely different in the other. And that's kind of a limitation of my argument tonight where I didn't remove speakers from locomotives other than to just see what they were. Well here I am in the official Drew at Nordell MRRC voiceover location <laughs> which is really under a blanket. But I saw them do it on Discovery Channel so you know. It's pretty official. Uh, this is going to turn into half of a taking shells off locomotives clinic. And as you can see, this one took me a while. So I made all these kind of fast motion. But right here, you can see that this is a pancake speaker, at least how I refer to those kind of flat types of speakers. And it has a molded in baffle, uh, just plastic molded in. 
probably talking a bit too early here because it took me a while to get this tape off with my refusal to go get an actual screwdriver so then I had to walk away for a second find an actual screwdriver in my garage and it took me about five minutes but sped up eight times it's really about 20 seconds so then I come back in a second and I found <laughs> a real screwdriver uh, compared it with a knife because you know knives knives are effective screwdrivers for people like me who refuse to refuse to use real screwdrivers <laughs> and then I, I eventually got the speaker off and this was a whole 10 minute process which is a bit longer than I'd like to admit but I finally got the speaker off and we could see it was just a flat ESU pancake speaker um, just plastic molded around uh, the metal speaker parts and this one it's really loud we'll test it in just a second but it has some impressive volume to it uh, when I reviewed it it was the loud it's the loudest diesel look <laughs> not when I reviewed it it is the loudest diesel locomotive I've heard before you can see the baffle uh, it was pretty deep. I don't. That's not the right word, but it, it shoots down into the chamber where the 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 worm gears are, and it gives it plenty of room to kind of diffuse outwards. So uh, baffle's not quite the right word, but sound diffusion, um, plenty of room for it in here. And then it took me a while to get the shell back on, but eventually I found uh, a curved part where I could just kind of uh, wedge the shell over. Next up is the Rapido UK. 16 xx pannier tank and this is really easy because um the the water tanks pull off and you can get the shell off quickly the one thing i noticed though is that uh, i was using knives and this one re like it's it's not really a screwdriver it's more of a soldering tool and that makes it <laughs> kind of hard to get screws off but i eventually resorted i'm not sure if it was here or later to a, a real screwdriver i put time in to go find one but here we have the esu sound cube speaker um and it's not sound sugar cube excuse me uh just a regular plastic baffle that comes with it there's holes in the bottom of the chassis that let the sound go through and uh, as you'll see in a second the shell of the locomotive serves as a nice kind of extra supplementary baffle to it and for its size it does produce a good sound and we'll test that out in a second as well there you get a good look at where the speaker fits in that acts as sort of a secondary baffle now we can fit the screws back in there my trusty my trusty knife as I refuse to get a screwdriver and these um, you can't put them in with a with a knife so I just set them aside because the saddle tank screws really do all the work and the the under chassis ones are kind of supplemental these pins Bachman pins Wow, they, they are nerve-wracking for me, but I finally got them off. And the thing about this is you can't use a knife that deep on a screw. So I actually had to go find a screwdriver, and I got them out. I've never taken the shell off of this one before, which is surprising to me, because Bachmans are always kind of easy because they don't have pins, which is you know, which is good. Um, Looking at this camera footage, that's good camera footage. I just invested in a real camera, so shots like this is actually in focus compared to a cell phone camera but anyway get the shell off we have all the screws out it's just a matter of kind of wiggling it off and uh, this was kind of weird because I couldn't tell how to pull the tender away um, a lot of electronics going on and I, I at first was kind of like no I'm not going to take it off but then um, I did <laughs> and I don't know exactly why but I got my screwdriver out and I just started taking things out which is usually a very bad thing to do um, and then I thought I could just get away with that but no every single screw needs to come out of course so I took the screws out of the circuit board and then you can pull that off kind of more like pull it aside and there's a plastic piece which I kinda lost later but we'll get to that and now you can take everything off these pins don't really pull aside so I had to screw them off with a screwdriver but then we got what I believe is a Soundtracks pancake speaker. Um, it's really thin. There's no baffle to it, unless you count the entire tender as a baffle, which you know <laughs> you might want to do that. But I don't know. It's it's it sounds good. I mean, I've had this Bachman one for a while. I know a lot of people have had Bachman Berkshires. They're pretty common beginner locomotives, um, and even. <laughs> obviously you know rivet counter locomotives um, I know people who've super detailed them and they look really good um, even with that 
uh, sound value sound that they have. And this speaker does a nice job. I mean, I don't know people who've replaced it. Like, you know, it does it does a nice job when you turn it down. And that's what we're trying to find out today. So I guess this helps with that. And I had to skip to the end because it took me a while to put this shell back on. It's just a bit lighter than it started out because I was left with three screws. But uh, moving on to the next victim. Uh, we're going to test out with the Rapido M420, but uh, that's new and I don't want to break it. Uh, I actually do know how to take the shells off the RDC, so that's what I took the shell off here. Um, same speaker, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but take the couplers off, and then there's some nerve-wracking pins you need to pull aside. Uh, you can see how much I love to shake things to make screws fall out. Um, this always takes me a long time. I kind of skipped ahead in the video a little bit here, but... You know, there's two in the front, two in the back. We've all bent locomotive shells before. Don't want to crack it. I've never cracked one before, but I don't want to. Well, now we're inside. I got the shell off. I broke off the coupler cut lever and the pilot, but uh, we're inside all in the name of knowledge. So here you can see the Rapido MP3 cell phone speaker, and they began selling these on their web uh, website Excuse me, for $12, or $12 for a pack of two, and we'll get to that in a second later. Um, but you can see how little space it takes up. It's just one molded part. You can It's plug and play, essentially. Two wires pop out of there, stick it to wherever it needs to go, and you're all set. This geez, It just needs to sit down somewhere. You don't need to do anything else to it besides provide the space. And this is the same speaker that's inside of your cell phone, essentially. So you think about how you play music on your phone, probably listening to me on your phone, and sounds good. So I got it back together without too much breakery too much more breakery at least and it's on to the next victim now this is a proto 2000 gp20 i believe um and as you can see i the front coupler is already kind of messed up and i didn't know how to take this shell off so i did what is probably the least smart decision i could have made just to start unscrewing random screws um and obviously that didn't pay off so there was one in the front one in the back and one in the fuel tank um, so here I am taking the fuel tank screws off, and of course, as soon as I'm done doing that, I make another poor decision was just to rip the fuel tank off. And uh, yeah, so nothing else I can say about that. But it just kind of comes off. This top section's always been loose, so I'm like, can I get to it through there? And no, turns out it was a separately applied part that I just broke off. But we can see the circuit board, but not the speaker. <laughs> Turns out that didn't want to go back on more than just kind of sitting there. Anyway, uh, it took me a second. This was me debating whether I wanted to rip the shell off because I could feel it was kind of loose. I unscrewed some more screws, which was more poor decision making. And then it got really loose to the point where I, I had a little moral debate with myself whether I wanted it to be, you know, un put back togetherable and it was also me forgetting to take the coupler boxes off <laughs> so that was kind of my debating time but then after a little bit of mindfulness I decided to just rip it off and that's what you're seeing here my little my little halfway do I really want to do this should I try to put a screw back in and I did uh, but it wasn't the right screw because I have no organization whatsoever so I it just turned out that I gave up on that after a little bit and took this shell right off. So if anybody from the Walther Service Department's watching, uh, you know, maybe if you notice what I'm doing wrong and want to send me some parts. So yeah, this is definitely quite loose now. But all in the name of learning. So I couldn't find the speaker, which was the problem. <laughs> and it took me a long time, that's why I sped this up. Uh, a lot of ripping apartery, which is, I guess is a word. This was the only place where I thought a speaker could be fit, so I just took back the tape, took back the wires, and, um, oh my god, yeah, me and tape don't get along if you haven't noticed by however many locomotives were through now, but then you pull apart these two sides of the metal encasing, and, um, it just kind of comes apart, so not easily, <laughs> I just kind of ripped it off, I did manage to get it back on before I tested it so we could use the speaker baffle, but I didn't manage to reattach the shell. So, you know, just just run this as it is. <laughs> as long as it doesn't go upside down and all the parts go flying off. But there's the speaker. It's extremely thin. Like, the silver you're seeing is the actual metal on the other side. Which, I guess, is kind of cool to look at. But, I mean, this one sounds good. I've used it for years and it sounds great. 
it's a very thin speaker, so we'll see how that fares up when it's compared to everything else. Um, it's a soundtrack system running off of Tsunami 1. No, this one's obviously not Soundtrack Tsunami. It's a Broadway Limited Challenger from the 2019 run, I think. 2019, yeah. Pre-COVID, the one they did before coronavirus shut everything down. Uh, as you can see, I, I don't know why I tried my knife on this one looking back. I made a lot of poor decisions recording this video. Um, I, I, But I was watching the TSG Multimedia hang out so maybe that was distracting me and made me use a knife over a screwdriver once I actually put in the effort to find a screwdriver anyway the Broadway limited shells are actually pretty easy to take off uh, maybe that's just because I've I've done it a couple times before <laughs> so we'll see but um get the shell off and it's coupler box off because I didn't take the coupler box off and I ripped off the coupler cut lever so yeah I'm just, I'm just, I broke a lot of things tonight. A lot of things that were broken. This shell didn't come off quite easily, which was odd. I think the, the, maybe it was just me wanting it to come off more than it should have. But I got it off, and you can see inside how they're like high bass speakers. It's a die cast um, speaker baffle. And if you've ever heard of Broadway Limited Locomotive before, they're all about bass. All the sounds are the lowest out of all the manufacturers that I've heard and they just do a really good job at <laughs> installing sound in their locomotives so this is the last one we're looking at before we put all this stuff on the test track but you can see how all these speakers are different in their own way and we're just going to try to make some sense out of everything so moving on trying to put this back together this was me realizing that the coupler cut lever was kind of broken and bent it it wasn't bent it was just kind of severely broken but I, I put that together off camera or maybe I did it on camera I don't really know hopefully I did it off because that would take up too much time but you know speed stuff up eight times and it seems to go by a lot quicker than <laughs> two hours of me ripping my stuff apart and attempting to put it back together um, but I, I got this one back together and I put it on the track and it made noise so you know that's <laughs> that's progress as opposed to it not working at all so that's good. We put all the screws back in, and we're going to move over to the test track. So I'm going to stop talking. The titles are on the screen. You're going to hear these locomotives and listen for speaker reverberation, because that's the goal. Factory settings.
Antoine. One hundred. What does all of this mean? Is Drew just crazy? Well, yes, but actually there's a meaning behind all of this madness. I wanted to try to find the best speaker in HO scale. As I said at the beginning of the video, and I'm a teenager who's fine spending a whole bunch of money on poor financial decisions on Challengers and Royal Hudsons, but when it comes to spending, you know, $50 to see which kind of speaker I might like, I'm not really, not really into that, so I ripped all my stuff apart, and I think I came to a clear winner. So let's take a look at the results. You just listened to all these different locomotive sounds, and you heard which one we got the sound low enough that the speaker didn't make any of those vibrations or reverberations. I'm not a sound expert. I don't know what the proper term is, but I hope one of those makes sense to the expert out there. Um, so we're going to move on to this chart, which I compiled. And you can see all the products we have, and let's go through it real quick. So the first up we did was the Walther's Mainline PA, and it had an ESU pancake speaker with a baffle that was just kind of molded to the speaker. The maximum CV level that we reached was 120 without the speaker vibration. So that was the last CV we hit. We did all the way from the max volume to the factory default volume just below that. And then we went in 20 CV, <laughs> I guess, yeah, 20 CV increments all the way down. And we reached a maximum decibel level at that 120 of 93. So that's without vibration. Uh, next over, we hit the Bachman Berkshire, and that was with a really, really, really thin Soundtracks Pancake speaker with no baffle to it. Uh, I went down starting at 225, which was the factory default. We went all the way up to 250, um, and then we went all the way down in 25 increments, I believe, 25 CV increments, to, to hit CV100. And at CV100, the maximum sound level we hit was 92. Um, over from that, we have what once was a Walther's Proto GP20, but uh, is now more more of a more of a science museum display. So maybe I'll have to donate it to somebody or just <laughs> send it back to Walther's. Say have fun. Uh, but that was equipped with a Soundtracks quote quote very very thin pancake speaker with a diecast baffle structure that kind of went around it. That I've never seen that before, but it's always had this really good sound to it. Like. You know, there's only so much you can do with HO sound, but it always had good depth. So maybe there's something to that diecast baffle structure as we saw on the Broadway. Anyway, we the CV level we hit on this, and as you can see, going down the next couple, the maximum CV was pretty good. I mean, we had no vibration all the way up. The max, uh, so it's not the loudest speaker, but we hit an 87 decibel level, which is still you know pretty pretty loud when the uh, decibel meters held up to the speaker. Over with the M420 slash RDC slash all Rapido products have this speaker situation going on, at least in HO scale, as their cell phone MP3 speaker. And they do sell these now. I found that out like yesterday. Um, I don't know how long they've been doing it, but I'm definitely going to stock up. Or I have some alternatives I'm going to present in a second. Um, we reached the maximum CV level with them. It was about 20 less than their factory default. But you can see when I, I turned on drive hold, I turned the not I turned it all the way up to notch eight, blew the horn, played the music function that they have on there, and uh rang the bell and there was nothing going on and that's why I love Rapido. Anyway, <laughs> you know about my Rapido obsession. Uh, we reached a maximum decibel level of one hundred two with them, which is pretty significant <laughs> so moving on from that I tested my iPhone 11 while we were on mp3 cell phone speakers and uh, CV level on my cell phone was maximum <laughs> um, playing a Dynamo Productions video I got a maximum decibel level reading of 105 which is just above the M420 and there's a significant gap you can see between the mp3 speakers and everything else that's going on 
Uh, on from that, we have the Bachman Climax, which I'm sure everybody's seen that before and knows what it is. Uh, so I, I don't want to take that thing apart because it's so small, and I know it's going to be one of those things that I, you know, it's going to be the next GP20. I don't want to lose two things for this video. Um, I looked on some parts diagrams online, and Bachman doesn't always show what speakers in their models with that, but I f believe it's a sugar cube. And especially considering the space, I could very well be wrong. <laughs> but that's just kind of my educated conclusion. Uh, I got a max CV level with that, maxed it out. And the maximum decibel level that we read out without that vibration going on was 78. Uh, over from that is the Broadway Limited Challenger. And I used the chuffs and the whistles combined on the other tests for steam locomotives. But on this, I just used their... Uh, idling steam sound because e on the factory settings I noticed some reverberation with that so I guess the whistle would have read out some higher CV or higher decibel readings but just on the Broadway Challenger with all the effort they put in that into the idling sequence compared to compared to all the other manufacturers out there I wanted to test out their steam sounds so out of the box it's kind of reverberating I turned it all the way up which made it worse <laughs> obviously just the way noise works but then I turned it down to a CV level of 75 and that read out 92 decibels it probably could have been up there with the M420 uh, if I used the whistle but just because of the way that I tested it and the sounds on the locomotive I read out a 92 on the steam sounds uh, and then the Proto RDC I kind of threw in there as a last minute addition and same with the Rapido UK pannier tank that had an ESU version 5 decoder uh, the yeah, so they were both kind of thrown out because the UK tank did something called not working for no reason, which is always fun. And I tried to get it to work uh, because it just had two hours before I started filming, but it did not want to do that. So I don't know why. <laughs> however, not ready for this video. So that's a shame. Um, however... We got some sounds out of the Proto RDC, but it did not want to program today, which is another reason why both of these got disqualified. And no, DQ does not stand for Dairy Queen as much as I wanted to. I haven't been there since COVID started, so oh well. Moving on, I think we can declare a winner. From all this, I think we can declare that the MP3 speakers are kind of in the lead above everything else. I mean, they're in a league of their own. They get a lot of sound. You can hear between the other types of speakers and the MP3 speakers. You're probably listening to me on an MP3 speaker. You know, at least 50% of the people watching this clinic. And think about how clear my voice sounds. Whether, or as a, comparatively to if you played this out of a model train speaker, you know. So MP3 speakers could really be the future of model train sound because it's so clear and you don't max out at those lower volumes you get a really high volume and as high as we turn this up we didn't hear any of that speaker reverberation so why don't we take a look at some of the other things we can see about mp3 speakers and then we can bring this to a close so over here what's on the market for mp3 speakers and now i want to start with rapido because they're the one uh, model train company who's really embraced this they sell a two pack for twelve dollars and this is kind of you saw this is what we saw in the rdc and what was in the m420 all their other ho locomotives it's nice that they're finally selling these i don't know how long they've been doing it but anyway two pack for twelve dollars and then we move around and there's a lot out there that's worth taking a look at uh so those are kind of generic cell phone speakers they're selling the ones i got are all iphone speakers just because i know there are some of the loudest that i'm aware of out there in cell phones um the iphone 6 speaker is five dollars from irreplaceparts.com below that you see the iphone x dual loudspeakers because there's two and there's a positive and a negative on there just like any other speaker that's with all these cell phone speakers and that's 415 on ebay and then over we had the iPhone 11 dual speakers, again, that's two, each have a positive and negative, just like any other speaker, and that's on replacebase.eu for $4. Now, 
all these cell phone speakers, you think about how big they are. I think that's a concern of some people. The Rapido ones are probably the biggest because they are, while they are cell phone speakers, they're more generic cell phone speakers. But you look at the three, the iPhone 6, 10, and 11 speakers here. Think about your cell phone. It's about three millimeters thick. So if there's room for this to fit in the very, very, very bottom of your cell phone, there's room for you to put it in an HO and probably an N, maybe even a Z scale locomotive. And I didn't include it here, but think about when you hold your cell phone up to your ear for a phone call, that's a speaker. And you don't usually listen to music through it, but you could. And they sell those earpiece speakers, and they would probably be a good solution for small HO scale and N and Z scale if you can't fit, which would, you know, that would have to be a very small space for you not be to not be able to fit it uh one of these loud speakers in there so there's an alternative a smaller mp3 speaker that would be in the earpiece that would be worth a try as well but i didn't cover that here they're about the same price if you're wondering because i did take a look at them but not worth including here so moving on from the loudspeakers Compare it to the other stuff we have on the market. I mean, like I was saying before, speakers are expensive. It's it's ten dollars for for a speaker. And as you can see, these are the the deals of the day that Model Train stuff has on speakers. The day of the clinic, uh, TCS Mini Oval, the smallest speaker that they make, it's ten dollars. And then we go over to Bowser, a low height sugar cube speaker. It's fifteen dollars. Digitrax compact rectangular box it's eleven dollars soundtrack says their small overall speaker at twelve dollars i mean you know they're reasonable prices but especially when compared to these mp3 speakers that have this better performance this technology it's not about what company they're made by it's just about the technology of the speaker so i think what we're going to see soon is more companies embrace having this technology in model railroading I mean, you can look at this video here, this clip from the RDC, how Rapido installed it. Uh, it's not me praising Rapido, I promise. But you can see how small of a space it takes up. We heard the great sound it makes. And if we see more manufacturers, sound people making these speakers and manufacturers including these, we're ready for the next generation of sounds. So I really think that MP3 speakers are the future of model railroading because they have unparalleled quality just think of how you play music through your phone you wouldn't do that through your model train but you think about it and why not because if we have this available technology then we can there's a reason for us to make better recordings to put into the models and then we have a whole cycle of improvement so i think this is a really interesting topic that's not touched on a lot and i'm excited to see how it grows in the coming years <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
I saw it. <laughs> All right. Looks like we're back. Oh, Drew, <laughs> Drew, that was awesome. That was awesome. Uh, Thank you. We've got a little bit of time here. We got a bunch of questions. Uh, so I'm going to just jump right in. All right. All um, right. So yeah, as I mentioned to you, because we're behind the scenes, I didn't get a chance to see the video yet. So some of these questions you may have answered more directly. Uh, so somebody wants to know whose layout you were, you were running on as you did this uh, this testing. Uh, so I went to Dave Gesford's Baltimore and Ohio in HO scale. And um, these two items were some of the most normal that I brought. I brought down that uh, UK tank you saw and his, his exact words were, what the expletive is that? So <laughs> I got that on film. So maybe I'll include that in a review somewhere. But it was it was a fun day. Do you know what? Okay, do you know why these speakers are called MP3 speakers? Somebody asked that. Well, because they were used in MP3 players, so uh, probably call them cell phone speakers. Maybe they have a better name, but okay, that's how I refer to them. And 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 how many ohms are the speakers? Huh. Most you know? cell phone speakers and MP3 speakers are eight ohms. Um. For the most part. Okay. 
Um, so let's see. Somebody asked, do you have a preference for speaker volume? Do I, I have a pretty... preference for speaker volume? Yeah. I'm not sure what that means. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, as loud as it can get without sounding distorted. <laughs> I think that was the goal of the clinic. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, how about sound decoders? I think you, you, what you did was you took apart the, the ones that you had. So you, you had different ones. <coughs> I'm sorry. Um, do you, having gone through that, do you, do you find that you have a preference for the, <laughs> for the type of decoder? The sound uh, decoder? My decoder preference is for diesel, it's soundtracks for steam. It's ESU because I feel like both of them have kind of pioneered in that in their respective fields. Okay, so say that again. <clears throat> ES, well, ESU's really developed steam. They have a lot of features that nobody else has, okay. um, like cylinder cocks, and every manufacturer that customizes the sounds, like they have some ones from their factory, but Rapido with their Royal Hudson, as you heard in the video, they really took advantage of all the features that ESU has and made it a really good decoder. And then we were all familiar with soundtracks for the past while. It's been the best selling sound decoder. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. Um, so I'm wondering because I, I don't have any sound locomotives. Um, I guess you, you just have to decide whether you're in or out. Right. And, uh, yeah. so then you're in this process. <laughs> oh, you don't have any pretty... sound locomotives. No, because a lot of mine are older and, uh, yeah. So, um, to go to sound means changing out the decoders and everything. That's a pretty big mm. project. Well, with your with your MP3 speakers that you know work really well, <laughs> it'll make the job easier. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Um, did you have you ever worked with any locomotives that don't have enough room for the speaker that you want? And uh, what what do you do there? Well, the one MP3 install mm -hmm. that I have done so far. Um, was in a really small tank engine. I put those Bachman 060s they did. I actually tried that. I got a simple, it was like this really cheap steam decoder, but I got a um, small iPhone 10 speaker, I think is what I chose, because they keep huh. making the speakers smaller and specifically iPhones, which is why I like to use those. Um, and I fit that in around all the, the board and stuff. So it was interesting how that how that fit together. Maybe that'll be a YouTube video sometime. Yeah, yeah. No, that's awesome. Well, I'm I model an N scale, so almost you know so many of the yeah of the applications are like really really space limited. Well, for for N scale, what I'd really recommend is as I I always reference I, iPhone speakers because they every generation keep getting smaller and smaller, most noticeably out of the phone brands out there, and mm. they get louder too. So the most recent one's the iPhone 12. So I'd even see if you could find iPhone 12 speakers and they usually come in packs of two because it's cell phone replacement parts and all iPhones have two speakers. So you could, you know, and if you can't fit both, then that's fine. But then mm -hmm. you just have your positive and negative. You solder on there and it works fine. I mean, it's a lot of sound and a little bit of space and you don't need a baffle because it's just one drop in piece. Oh, yeah. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Um, what, so this is a little bit off topic from this clinic, but <laughs> people want to know what's that, what's that over your shoulder? What are you, what are you building there behind you? Oh, well, this is my crash test dummy. This is not <laughs> the bulk of what I do. I put a lot of effort into my club projects. We've been really working on our modular layout, bringing it from 12 by 20 feet to 20 by 40 feet. So for the past two years, I've really been working on that. But this is kind of where I try out track work and scenery, and um, I don't show it very much because it really is kind of quite mutated, but <laughs> it it gets the job done. It's a nice test track. That's your test track, but it's got a lot of stuff on it. I can see scenery and buildings and things like that. Yeah, you could call <laughs> it a storage facility as well. <laughs> below, it, or below it, we store bottles of water. Okay. <laughs> like, that's all that's below it. Let's see. Uh, somebody said, how does the quality change with lower volumes? Uh, and then and then went on to say, listening to all this noise from six or more locomotives can get annoying. 
Um, I guess so. If you turn down the volume of them, uh, does the quality profile change? Yeah. So I, the one chart I have in the sound tests I did, you can see how as that's what I was doing. Why you would see okay. the title on the screen, what CV program to what, and we continuously drop down the sound CV until we got to no reverberation. And I saw a Facebook comment who was saying that a better term would be distortion. And I get that because he was saying, you know, rock guitars, that's the term they use. And I get that. I mean, I, I just kind of make words up sometimes. So <laughs> I guess that's the word I better start using. Right. Okay. All right. Let's see. Somebody asked if you need a box to put an MP3 speaker in. An MP3 speaker is the easiest thing ever to use because all you need to do, and it's a really complicated process, you need to listen, okay? Set it down. <laughs> Got it? You might want to say that <laughs> again. It. You just need to set it down. I mean, it's two wires. You solder the positive and negative. There's no baffle. You get great sound quality. It's loud without any reverberation or distortion, as we, as we just said. You just need to set it down, and it works completely fine. You don't need to make a baffle or a box or anything. Just fit it, it somewhere, there. and it will work. Okay. Provided That's there's a hole nearby for the sound to get out. That sounds pretty straightforward. Yeah. Let's see. What do you consider the best overall package available today? The Rapido Hudson or the BLI Challenger? Oh, my God. <laughs> they they really... Well, I like both companies. Um, If I had to choose one, I'd just say the Hudson because I've got it more recently, but they're each good products, and I like them both. I own okay. them both. Okay, good good political answer there. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> Have you heard uh, the BLI Paragon 4 sound package yet? Uh, I don't think anybody has <laughs> yet. Um, I'm mm -hmm. doing Model Railroad News coverage of it. Uh, me and Tony Cook are going to do a video on my channel, Drew at Nordell MRRC on YouTube, talking with Bob Grubba about Paragon 4. And I think it's going to be the first exterior publicity about it, which is going to be cool. Nice. Um, so hopefully we'll maybe get a sneak peek there, but I don't think there's any available recordings of Paragon for yet. So okay. we'll have to see. All right. Uh, let's see. Somebody wrote for small steam engines, they normally use an ESU micro five. What would you recommend for that? Small steam engines, that British thing that you saw in the video. And if you didn't see it, you can rewind. Uh, it's called next 18 DCC. And I had no idea what it was before like January, but it's a really cool tech. It's ESU version five, the size of a quarter pretty much. And there's no pins. It's a nub and you stick it into another nub and that's how it fits together. So it's really interesting how that works, but look up next 18. It's like a whole ESU version five decoder in a very small package with any speaker you want. Okay. Have you tried to install sound in any other scales other than HO? I know that's where you model. Have you? I don't think I own anything else. Well, oh, <laughs> the one thing I do have, G scale. We have a G scale locomotive that runs on a battery in my front yard 10 hours a day. We just set it out there and we put uh, the cheapest sound system we could find in it. And it just has chuff noises. But So no, no in scale or Z scale for you yet, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Okay, small European engines don't have space in the tender. Usually the motor is there, like a Fleischmann. So are the speakers really difficult to fit in? Any recommendation? I don't know if you've had any experience with anything like that. Yeah, that's the. I keep coming back to that uh, Rapido UK tank engine. Yeah. And I know there's a lot smaller stuff, like the um, recently what came out. The Terriers are a good example, and there's been some O4Os recently. I don't know if those are what you're talking about is smaller, but I definitely recommend next 18 or if you have some other decoder that fits. Um, and then sugar cubes are great, but cell phone speakers, the Rapido one's kind of chunky, but if you get like an iPhone speaker, like 10 or 11 or 12, yeah, there's an iPhone 12 now, get that speaker um, and put it in. And I think that's going to be the thinnest you can find and it's going to sound better than a sugar cube. That's awesome. Awesome. Okay. So I think we're just about out of time. Tell, give us that, the, give us your information again about your YouTube channel. 
Well, my name is Drew Warrington. I am Drew, D-R-E-W, at Nordell, N-O-R-D-E-L-M-R-R-C on YouTube. I do a lot of stuff for Model Railroad News with Tony Cook, how-to reviews and interviews. That's pretty much what I do. <laughs> okay, super. Well, Drew, thank you very much for starting us out on a high note uh, today. We appreciate it, and we'll look forward to seeing you again soon. All right, thanks for featuring me as the first on your anniversary. I appreciate it. You bet.